Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Brody Precision. In this video, we're continuing to take a look at Teltonica's RMS, or Remote Management System, and how you can make use of it on your sites and on your systems where you might be installing a Teltonica router to get you remote access. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can actually set up and use a VPN through RMS um, and get that pushed down to our routers and get logged in remotely and access a JACE. So let's jump right into RMS and get started. All right, RMS is open. I'm going to jump right in and get logged in. Two-factor automatically is done in my case because I'm using a password manager. And when we first get logged in here, we know uh, we're going to get this page, which is the devices page where all of our devices that we have set up in RMS are going to show up. Um, in our case here, we're going to be playing with this uh, RUTM50, and we're going to be looking specifically at the RMS VPN and even more specifically, the VPN hubs. So if I click into VPN hubs, we will see that um, sort of a blank page to start. At the top right, you will see that we can download the VPN client in order to make use of these hubs and access uh, them from our machines by clicking that download button. So I'm going to do that right now and download the client. We also have the ability to use the regular old OpenVPN client and download a configuration file from within our VPN hub configuration. And I'll show you that in a moment here. All right, so our client is downloaded. Let's uh, run that and get set up on our client side. And we will agree, install, let, oops, let's do that again. Uh, say yes, not no to that. Let it do its thing. Behind the scenes, this is basically using OpenVPN to make everything work and happen. The uh, special part about the Teltonica VPN application is that you're logging in with your RMS username and password, and you automatically get access to all of the VPN hubs that you have access to. So I will close out of this, and then I will come back over here, go to my applications, and I'll do... Teltonica RMS VPN, have that open up. What you will get looks like this. I actually had this uh, installed previously, so that's why I was already logged in. If I click log in, it's going to take me to the RMS website, and I'm going to have to log in there if I'm not logged in already. Because I am, everything's hunky-dory, and we're good to go. So now if I come back in here to my VPN hubs, we can see here that there's one um, piece that's showing up that's actually a VPN quick connect, which is something a little bit different. We'll cover that in a future video, but uh, we only want to work with VPN hubs at the moment. So we'll go back to that page. We're set up and running. Um, I guess I should also mention that there, there are versions of this VPN client available for iOS and Android as well. You can get to them through the drop down here or just searching for them on the um, stores for either of those platforms. Uh, if I go to my actions now and do add VPN hub, now we get to the details and getting our VPN hub set up. So the first thing that we're going to do is give it a name. I'm just going to call this VPN demo. And then we're going to choose if we want ton or tap. So if we um, mouse over here, it doesn't really give us a ton of information. Uh, ton is going to be our typical layer 3 VPN. If you need layer 2, uh, you have tap as an option. It requires a little bit more setup. It's also a beta, so things may change. Um, so right now, my recommendation is just stick to tap, uh, ton. Uh, in the future, we may cover the tap uh, functionality as well. So we'll do that, and then we're going to select this location where we want this VPN server essentially to be running in the world, what data center location we want it to be. Uh, I'm in the U.S., so we're going to choose U.S. Virginia. Uh, I don't need a description here, and I don't need any tags, so I'm going to hit Create. Uh, I can't use a space here, so I'll just put a dash instead of a space. Let it do its thing and start that VPN server. So really what's happening behind the scenes is there's literally a little VPN server that's getting spun up 
in a data center in Virginia uh, that we can now go in because it's created. If I click on the name, we can go in here and configure this further so that we get exactly the functionality that we want. So uh, first we will go to the Clients tab and we'll hit Add. We need to first add in the users that we want to have access to this VPN. Obviously, I need access myself, so I'm going to add myself as a user. Hit that and hit close. Next, I will come back up here and do add again. And I need to add the devices that I want to be able to connect and talk to. So under the RMS devices tab, it's only going to show me the devices that are up and running at the moment because obviously in order to configure them and get them working with the VPN, they have to be up and talking. So we will hit the plus next to our UTM50 and hit confirm it will generate the certificates that it needs in order to make that VPN happen, move them back and forth between RMS and the router so that all of that is functioning the way it should. And then another thing I want to show here, I'm not going to actually set up or use it, but you do have the ability to use a custom user. So if you wanted to give um, access to a site to someone who you don't necessarily want and they don't necessarily need full RMS access, you can come in here to the custom user area and uh, generate a completely um, unique user specifically for this VPN and they don't have the full RMS uh, abilities in order to get in. So that is a nice little feature to have. Next we're going to go over to the routes tab. Uh, this is how we are going to get our actual connection out to the site and the device that we want to connect to that is underneath our uh, router. So in my case, I have a Jace that's on the LAN side of my RUTM50. So the first thing that I'm going to do is enable this LAN forwarding switch. That's going to um, allow traffic to go into the LAN side of that router. And a nice thing here is that um, if I go to the question mark here under clients, there's a little animation that sort of shows you what each of those switches does. So if you need access to LAN devices, hit that LAN switch. If you need access to WAN devices, hit the WAN switch. You can do both if you need to. And that sets up the firewall rules and makes all of that stuff behind the scenes happen so you don't need to manually configure it yourself. Then the last step on the configuration on RMS itself is that we have to add in a route. And what this does is uh, point traffic to a specific IP address through the VPN. So your clients that are connecting to the VPN know that, hey, this particular IP address or set of IP addresses should be going through the VPN in order to access the correct device. So I'm going to do the auto scan feature here and select the uh, RUTM50 to do the scan on. It will go out and scan all of the devices that it can see. In my case, there's a whole bunch of stuff on the WAN side because that's where the 192.168.1 IP address is. Um, and then there's a couple things on the LAN side. That's the 10.10.10 IP address range. And uh, I'm going to go with this 10.10.10.100 IP address because that I know that that is my JACE. So I'm going to hit Add here. That route was successfully added. We will close out of this. When you add in a route, you have to restart the VPN hub. And RMS tries to make sure that you're aware of that by popping up the little restart hub button here in the top right hand corner. So we're going to hit that and do the restart. That'll take a couple seconds here while that does its thing. We are all set up and restarted now. And if I come back over into my VPN on my local machine and I do a refresh, I can now see that I have the VPN demo that we created, which is our, our VPN hub. And if I hit the switch now, we will connect and get access to that VPN after it does its thing for a little bit. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. 
All right, so now we are connected, and that means that I should be able to go up here in my browser and do an HTTPS colon slash slash 10.10.10.100. And now I'm able to access that JSON that's behind the, uh, behind the RUTM50, and I can access it completely. So I can access it through the browser here, and I can also open up uh, workbench and access it through there. And just to prove that that all works, I've got workbench open now. I'm going to do an open station TLS 10.10.100. Yes. And there you go. I've got full Fox and platform access to this JSE, and I can do everything that I need through that VPN. So hopefully that was helpful and informative to you. Um, full VPN, uh, very easy setup and usage. A couple little things in there that make it a little bit more difficult, say, than something like Tazibox. You got to hit a switch. You got to add in a route to the devices that you want to access. But other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, like and subscribe if you haven't already. We are definitely going to be covering more Teltonica features here in the near future. Um, thanks, as always, for watching. And uh, leave us a comment down below if there's anything specific in the Teltonica world that you'd like to see more of. Um, always looking for more ideas on videos that uh, everyone would like to see. So thanks, as always, for watching. And we will see you in the next video. Thanks.